Hello and welcome to One on One. I'm Vernon Ramazan. I'm very pleased to say my guest today is a co-founder and curator of a major event that's an annual event launch in Tobago, TED Export of Spain. Keita Deming, welcome to the program. Nice. Welcome Thanks back to the program. You've been here before. This is, in fact, going into your fifth year. It is, our 50th. it is our 50th. It's been getting bigger and bigger every year, hasn't it? Yeah, actually this year we're going to Queen's Hall. We started in Little Carib, so year one is in Little Carib. And That's a sign in itself, itself, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And Well, year one was really small. Um, and then we moved to Central Bank, and this year we're moving to Queen's Hall. And because we're kind of not quite big enough for Queen's Hall, but a little bit too big for Central Bank. So you'd rather have the extra capacity rather than not enough capacity? Yeah, we'd rather have as many, we wouldn't want to have to turn people away. That's kind of one of the things we've always said. We didn't want to have to, we had to turn people away the first year and we decided we never wanted to do that again. So that's kind of our thinking with Queen Sol. But the challenge is how do we still keep it intimate? Because mm -hmm. one of the hallmarks of the conference is an intimate conference where people get to meet each other and there's a lot of networking and share ideas and that kind of thing. So how do you still keep in a space like Queen's Hall, but still keep it intimate? And it also helps the speakers as well, doesn't it? Because they, they feel a connection with the audience. Yeah, so one of the things that's really different from our conference is our speakers are part of the crowd. So there's no VIP section for speakers other than... No VVIP? None of that. Yeah. So other than just before they get on stage, we reserve the three seats next to the stage for speakers to go, to go, to get ready to go on. Other than that, the crowd, there's no VIP, there's, no, there's just mixing. So you get a broad demographic mixing. And so for example, um, you can see sort of high school students who would come talking to a potential speaker. And they, uh, last year there were some really beautiful moments of that where you had teenagers who were talking to different people from different parts of society who they wouldn't normally have access to and they would get to meet these people and talk to them and share ideas and that kind of thing. So it's Which a is great, the beauty of, of, of TED Expo to Spain. Yeah, it's a great, great, great um, component of it where it really breaks down sort of our everyday limitations and our everyday hang-ups around mm -hmm. who can talk to who and who can't and who... The various strata of our society. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and age sort of gets broken down. It is a very intergener intergenerational space where you... I've seen young people talking about social media and surprising adults with the knowledge they have and then, not, and then the adults giving them sort of advice on like this is a really this, this is how Trinidad works this is a really good thing you should try you should try maybe you should network with this or maybe you should talk to this person and because some, sometimes the older people have the networks they can really help some of the younger audiences connect with people who they may need to connect with so it's, it's good like that Now for some people who may not know what TED is, or TEDx, or TEDx Port of Spain. Um, perhaps you might want to explain, right. break it I, I know it's really, really about ideas is basically what it is, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It started in California, as many interesting things do. Um, it was a conference that was around ideas worth spreading. Um, it's been around for 20 plus years. And then, I think it would be like seven or eight years ago, they decided to lend their brand out to people who love TED because they had started putting these talks online and a lot of them started going viral. So they realized that it was an audience for us. And they really decided let's open open source this and, and share, this, share this concept and idea with as many communities in the world as possible. Um, with that, they saw an uptake that they couldn't predict. So there are 100 something plus TEDx organizers in the world, TEDx events around the world. They've got millions of TED Talks online. For example, our, our videos have more, about a million plus views, and that's just Trinidad wow. and Tobago. So, um, so TED is about ideas worth spreading, and they do, their, they do their annual conference, and they do two annual conferences. I mean, it's quite expensive to get into that conference, but then they give away, the, they, they show the talks, they release one talk every day online. And those talks are really about leading thinkers, sharing perspectives or vignettes of sort of the leading ideas around different topics around the world. Um, TEDx is supposed to be a locally organized event and local organizers do TED style events geared towards whatever demographic they are. So in Trinidad we tend to not have a lot of tech heavy sort of TEDx speakers because we don't have that big of a, TED, a tech heavy industry. If you go to a TEDx event in somewhere like California, you get really heavy tech mm -hmm. focused sort of TEDx event. So our event is really focused, geared towards the issues of 
turn that into being on what we struggle with on a daily basis. So that's kind of our focus. And we're talking about a large number of speakers at each event, aren't we? You have about nine to ten speakers. Um, every year, it takes up, we recruit speakers about a year out. So right now we're recruiting speakers for 2016. Um, and it, there's a lot of coaching that happens along the way. Um, so we would pick about 11 speakers and, or 12 speakers and by actual day, about nine or 10 make it. Because you always have inevitably one speaker is not going to be, be able to make it mm -hmm. for some reason because we're picking really busy people, people who are doing all kinds of things in Trinidad and Tobago around the world and things change. So. So now, a lot of these influential people would make presentations elsewhere as well. Yeah. But as you mentioned with TEDx, the fact that it's an intimate setting and anybody can come and, yeah. and hear them. But they, also there are interesting limitations. I've had some TEDx guests from the past on the program. They said it was actually challenging for them to sort of coalesce all their ideas into the small time frame so, to make it approachable. So there are two, two things. Um, we generally don't look for only influential speakers. We look for people who, have, who are doing interesting things in Trinidad. So one of the things that we love about Trinidad is that we get, about TEDx is we get to juxtapose sort of household names with lesser, lesser known names who are both have powerful ideas worth spreading in Trinidad and Tobago. Because Trinidad and Tobago, we tend to go to the same people all the time. We need to mm -hmm. talk about X, talk to this person, and not Tell thinking about, about it, yeah. not thinking about that there are other people in this space who are doing interesting things. So for example, um, we've announced two speakers so far. Afra Raymond, who's quite well known in Trinidad, but everybody knows who that is. Um, and he's spoken before, isn't he? Yeah, so he's, he's spoken before and he's, he's got a 700,000. He's our most popular speaker and in the year five. We thought we'd bring him 700, back. 700,000 views? 700,000 views, his talk is that. Just, just him, him alone? Him alone. Wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, so that's his, staggering for anything local when you think uh, about yeah, it. Yeah, his talk sort of went viral for us. Because um, it, anyway, de detracting from my... No, go. Yeah. Um, we can ramble, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's Naima Muakil, I think her last name is... Zik Zakuri. She is, not many people have, have heard of her, but she was, I need to be very careful without giving away her talk, but she was a young lady during the time of the 1990 coup, Muslim woman, and has a very unique perspective on the woman's role during that time of Trinidad's history. Not many people in Trinidad would have heard of that. So those are the kind of things we're doing now. We just sort of juxtapose those well-known Trinidadian sort of mm -hmm. thinkers and doers with other less well-known thinkers and doers. The thing about doing a TEDx talk is you have to think about it as an upside down triangle. So you have a broad theme like corruption with, like, with Afra and then you have to, he, his challenge is bringing that down to a single point in 20 minutes or in less than 20 minutes. And that's a very difficult thing to do because when we're talking we tend to meander and mm -hmm. the best talks are the talks that start wide and zone in on that one idea and hit that target well. So that when you leave away, when you walk away from the talk, you say, so and so spoke about this, and you can say it in a sentence. The talks are not really the good ones, they're the ones that are like, he said something interesting, but I'm not sure, mm -hmm. or he went to here, he went to there, and that's really hard to do in a talk in general. So. And I guess you also have in mind, the back of your mind, that this is going to be online eventually yeah. and therefore has to have that sort of online appeal, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is simple, understandable and gets to the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's also really tricky because you have these complex ideas where people are trying to distill a complex idea in 20 minutes. That's not necessarily an easy thing, easy task to do. You think about the depth of work that some of these people have done. They've done entire thesis on it. They've written books on it. They've done a life's work on something and then we're trying to say, hey, talk to us in 20 minutes, like, mm -hmm. but not just an elevator speech, give us something of substance. So that's, that's, really, that's really challenging. Is, so. is there a, a sort of an urge on, on the part of, of you and whoever else is organizing to some measure bring in controversial speakers? Because I mean, quite often in social media, we have a tendency to only follow what we agree with and we don't always hear opposing views. Okay, so we won't, I wouldn't say we go for contra so for example... Um, different perspectives. Yeah, different perspectives for sure. So we're going for, this year the theme is off record. And off record is deliberately an attempt to bring conversations that we don't know, we have off stage, that we don't tend to bring on stage or we don't tend to have on our everyday discourse. So in Trinidad we say, we'll save that for later, and like we don't talk about that. That's, a, that's the sort of discourse we hear very often. And those are the kind of conversations we want to bring to the table this, this year. So 
I'm sorry to use Afro, but he's the only one we've announced this year so far. But um, a lot of times you say, but so-and-so, you know he teeth him. Well, we don't talk about that. Right. So in many ways, we try to bring it, bring topics that need to be brought up, but in a very intentional way. So it's not in a way that is meant to be controversial. It's meant to be well thought out. It's meant to be um, thought provoking. It's meant to be provocative. Um, so we are trying to be provocative, but we're trying to pre be provocative in an intentional, useful way, if that makes sense. You know, I guess perhaps the subject of race may come up as well as some of the topics. Yeah, so that, that is always, let's not talk about that now. Exactly, and that's, yeah. we, have, we have been, we do have a speaker in mind. Um, and we've been, that's, that's one topic we've been trying to get for the last five years. But again, because it's such a dynamite of a talk, the people we've chosen have either pulled off or have never have said, I don't think I can do that this year or whatever. And, it, and to, this is an election year. But also it's hard to deal with in 20 minutes or less. When exactly. Yeah. And race is an incredibly complex thing, mm -hmm. especially for a mixed culture like Trinidad and Tobago, where most people are are mixed in some way. So it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one to, to grapple with, but we've been, it's one that we're going after and we have some speakers in mind and hopefully one of those speakers will make it to stage this year, hopefully. Well, talk us through the process then of how you organize each of the events, the annual events, in terms of how you come up with the theme, how you choose the speakers, I guess also availability will be part of that. Yeah, yeah. And, and how you get the whole thing to finally work together. That's a long process. Um, well, you know. yeah, so basically it's like any project management. You break it down into parts and you, you break it down into pieces. The first thing we do is we pick a theme. And that's usually a group of members of the volunteer team would come together and we say, okay, what's really under the surface in Trinidad? What's a topic that people need to talk about? We started with changing conversations in our first year, then we went to courage, then we went to connecting. And then last year we did um, doing, doing, undoing, redoing, which was really an attempt to do action. And then this year we went to the theme off record, really because we wanted to get to those taboo things. We felt that courage was one of our best years and courage was a very emotional year that we did. And we felt that we needed something that got to the things that a lot of people are saying in clo behind closed doors and we need to get those things off stage. And so that's sort of where the group went to that and we brainstorm ideas. So we start with, with themes. We would start with a list of like 50 themes and we cross out, no, not that one, not that one, this mm -hmm. one, yes. And then we vote on it. And then after we vote, we narrow down to five and we don't choose based on popularity or everybody likes this one. We choose on like, okay, which one do we think we can get the best talks out of? So that's step number one. Step number two is then we have a speaker team of five people who connected in different networks in Trinidad as deliberate. So we have somebody in media, somebody in, in mark business, somebody who's like, we just have a different, a diverse team. I deliberately am not on that team because people always, hey, how do I get on this TEDx Port of Spain stage? And because I'm sort of the face of TEDx Port of Spain, I don't want to have to be part of that decision making. So we've tried to make that a fair process by getting a team together. Um, we ask, people to nominate on our website. If you go on our website, you can nominate somebody who you think is a speaker and you answer the questions, you give us contact information, and we consider those people based on the theme, based on other people. And then the team sort of picks, because we have somebody who's in the media who also knows sort of this person is doing interesting things, that kind of stuff. Right. So that's how we end up picking the speakers. And then after that, it's just basically, oh, then after that, we pair each speaker with a coach. And then that coach works with each speaker. So let's say we have nine speakers, we tend to have like five or six coaches and they help the speaker refine and hone that talk so that on the day they nail it. They okay. don't need any notes. It's like a performance. They just nail that, nail that idea. And for a lot of people it's really good process for them because they get to distill their ideas and thoughts in a 20 minute talk. Do you have people resisting and saying I don't need a coach and what I'm doing? Oh yeah, for sure. And yeah. what do you tell them at that point? Well, <laughs> It's a tricky scenario. Um, I don't Let's say you had like Gillian Lucky, who's a, a lawyer and is used to speaking, for example. Uh, I, I gather she did have a coach, but yeah. somebody like that, you think they say, well, you think there's something wrong with how I speak? Well, the first thing is that they've never done a TED style talk. And TED style talk is very different. Um, we've had resistance in the past. Some people, we've, we've told them, this is not the year for you because you, you're not prepared to do the work and this is a very different kind of event that conversation doesn't go across very well because of that person already has a certain 
demeanor about themselves mm. and they think I'm good enough. They don't think they need coaching. But from our experience, every single person who's gone on that stage that has not taken our coaching has done really poorly as a talk. Their talk has not resonated. They missed the mark. They, if you look at the views online, like I actually took all our talks and numbered them by views and then looked at those who got coaches and those who didn't get coaching. The ones who got coaching are definitely the top. They, they've got the most views, sort of. So who would be like the top five? I know you mentioned Afro is number one. So I, we like Afro, Raymond, Mark, Raymond. Um, actually, Tamia Hearn is one of our top. She talked about equity and she talked about um, sort of um, equal rights for yeah. all in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, I watched it, actually. Yeah, so she, she's, she's, and surprise, that's surprising because she's one of our more recent talks, mm -hmm. which means that she's surpassed some of the older talks. She's had less time to um, um, get hits on. Yeah, um, she's had less time to get hits on. She's done really well. Um, then, Gab, Gab was then was quite popular as well, wasn't she? Yeah, but she's sort of middle. She's not like I guess she's very specific about the, five, the type yeah. of topic it's about. And her talk gender. was like, her talk, the other thing about her talk was that she said, if I were president, and was very specific to Trinidad. Right. So the talks that tend to, the uh, talks that are popular tend to hit Trinidad as well as an international Having market. a universal theme. International market. So like, um, there's Nzinga Job. She did really well. And she, she, what she had done is she wrote, she used a diary to get over her experience of rape and then shared that experience on stage. And it, was, it is perhaps one of the most emotional moments in TEDx Spain ever, where people left that room crying and were just so moved by her story. Um, and I'm trying to think who's the next, who's the fifth most popular. I want to go with somebody like Jervis Warner, because Jervis Warner did a really, I think, I think he gave a talk that if you were there on the day, there's no way you were the same after that talk. So Jervis Warner talked about how his family had been um, robbed at gunpoint and that how we need to start forgiving and forgiving is the first step. But the way he ran us through that story in 20 minutes was probably one of the most 18 minutes of the most captivating talk we've had at that Expo this mean. But for some reason, it hasn't picked up in the same way that other talks have. That is the interesting thing with, with TED and TEDx, I, I guess, as well, is that you'll have a, a combination of different types of speakers. Yeah. Some will be informative and interesting, but some will really be life-changing to members of the audience, won't they? Yeah, so one of the biggest criticisms, for example, of Jervis's talk is that Jervis is one of the prominent businessmen in the country, so they wanted, that's the kind of talk they wanted, but he gave more of a, a philosophical, inspirational talk. Um, so there were some complaints that when we hear Jervis, we expected to hear about issues of the day. We expected to hear some, but he's a man who's had personal experiences and has had to, tried to live in Trinidad in the same way that we've all had and has mm -hmm. the same struggle. When he goes to the licensing office, he has the same struggles as we do. Um, when he comes in contact with crime, he has the same struggles we do. So then you have a real balance between what the audience expects of a speaker and what that speaker wants to talk about. Is it so, a similar thing sometimes when you approach a speaker and say, listen, Afra, for example, we want to talk about corruption, and Afra says, no, I want to talk about something else. Yeah, so over the years, to be honest, the first year we just sort of asked people to speak. The second year we asked people to speak on the thing that most mattered them. Now when we approach speakers, we say, this is the zone in which we want a speak. We are looking for a speaker who can speak to this. Do you think you can do it? Yes or no? Let's have a conversation about if you might be a speaker this year. So we've evolved our process as we've moved along. And the first part of that initiation is more of a dialogue to see, does this, do, does this person want to talk about this thing? Because what we don't want is a series of autobiographies on stage. Mm -hmm. So we want to see, but we want a series of ideas worth spreading on stage. So that's kind of how we've gotten to that place where we have a dialogue first with speakers. And then when speakers realize the amount of work that is involved, some, some opt out, some opt in, and you be, can be, in those early stages, you can tell who's going to be a good speaker and who's not. You can tell just based on how much interaction, how feedback they're going to, they're giving you. You can tell early on. I suppose as curator, things would have gotten easier in terms of the organizing the event in some ways after five years. And but also, they also, I would imagine, get harder because you're trying to exceed your expectations. Yeah. And people got a certain product 
and quality last year, you want to do even better this year. It's, it's, it's definitely gotten harder. Um, the reason I think it's gotten, the major reason I think it's harder is because the novelty of having a TEDx Port of Spain, we've been doing it for five years. So there were people who've loved TED and they were like, man, we're going to do that. And they've come. Um, you have, I think, growing pains are harder to manage than beginning startup things. Because in the beginning, we said, you know what, we're going to try this. If it doesn't work, nothing lost. Nothing, yeah. nothing lost, no love lost. What makes it harder is that we have a following of people who are very passionate about the TEDx project and think that we're doing great work. We get let, like I got an email this, this week because we're doing, we have a salon happening on Thursday, um, which is part of a taboo conversation series, which is a lead up to off, off record. So we do many events in the lead up to the big conference. And this one is on death and dying. And we got a really personal email from somebody saying, I really appreciate what you all are trying to do. This is a topic that we didn't have. And it was a heartfelt letter, email that we got. So it's harder, I think, to manage the expectations of the community you've just built. And whereas you don't have that expectation when you just start. People sort of expect you to fail. Plus you're people, all kind of gung-ho at the beginning. Yeah. You know. But people, Down the torpedo sort of attitude. Yeah. But I think people also didn't expect a, a, a conference of professional, of world-class professional style. So they expected us to start late. They didn't expect the speakers to be very good. They didn't expect our speaker choices to be very good. But because we've been very intentional about that, we've set a certain standard. Keeping that standard is very, very difficult. And especially, there were some years, there, there were two years in particular that like, you're like, how are we going to beat that here? Mm. So for example, we haven't had a second Afro talk but the first day we did it we had Mark Raymond and he went viral right away he went he went up to 300,000 second year we had Afro Raymond and then in the next big person that we've had really was Tamir Hearn who I think has gone the numbers have gone well, she's an interesting character and a very good speaker and so she's a great challenges conventional thinking quite often yeah so she's not afraid of challenging the status quo and that's what we're sort of looking for in a speaker somebody who was saying this can be better this can Trinidad can be different and and there are multiple places where that can happen. There are spaces where people can put very interesting thought into how can Trinidad be better. And Tamiya is definitely one of those who's on the front lines. And she's a very, as a Trinidadian, she's very, her history is very interesting. Like how she came to Trinidad. She's grown up, she spent a lot of time in the US and decided that she's coming back home here to make a difference. And, and she's always making a point that she's white presenting, but that, that is not her. Yeah, exactly. And that's another issue. Um, so, and she's another one who could have talked about a, a range of topics, right? So she embodies sort of that racist, um, who she pre how she presents, mm -hmm. and the politics that she can receive are two very, very different things. Or the expectations of people and around, multiple identities. around her identity can be very tricky for her. So is, is that the biggest challenge you have then as, as you go forward, just maintaining the standard and satisfying the needs and expectations of your loyal followers? I think the biggest challenge is how big do we grow. I think that's our massive decision point. Because I personally don't think we'll ever be able to, we'll ever do Napa. Napa is just too big, it's too well, you can't even use Napa now, so. Yeah, well, then, okay, yeah. that's a good point. But, yeah, but a venue like national Napa. National Stadium. Yeah, National it. Stadium. Like, I don't think that will ever be TEDx Port of Spain. Um, if anything, I think we're going to go to more intimate, intentional communities where people where it's about connecting, because I think we, caught the, we started on a philosophy of changing conversations, which is that the only way we can make a difference is if we actually change the dialogue in Trinidad. If we change the dialogue, we can change everything around us. Um, and I think that's our philosophy. So although we're using the TED, we're using TED platform because people love the idea of TED, etc. It's the issue is about how do we build a place that we can all grow old in and grow old with dignity? And how do we all have a life worth living for, from, from cradle to grave as Trinidadians? So a lot, if, that's just, if that's our position, there are lots of touch points and improvement areas for us to touch on. Um, so TEDx Port of Spain doesn't end up just being an environmental movement thing. It's also a business development thing. It's also how do we deal with oil? It's also how do we deal with corporate governance? How do we deal with public service? How do we, do? so it deals with a lot of issues. And you, we think that if we can get a community of people who 
are thinking together and thinking differently, you can really make a difference in this world. How do we measure that? I have no idea. Well, if we can measure that, I don't know. But okay. it's a, we, we are trying to build a community. Well, we're out of time, Keita, but just to remind people, it's happening October the 14th. October we'll 14th. be announcing the speakers closer to the date. We already have one announced. We've announced two, Nima and Afra. Um, we're going to be announcing another one at the end of this week, another two at the end of this week. And every three weeks, we'll announce two speakers. Excellent. I'm so, really looking forward to it. Keita, pleasure as always having you. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much for being <laughs> Cheers, here. Man. You've been watching One on One. Join us again tomorrow for another edition.